In this video, I'm going to discuss the coding platform Scratch, my personal thoughts and opinions on the platform, why I prefer 2.0 over 3.0, and why FNAF should be allowed on the platform. If you want to know my honest thoughts on the platform, the improvements they can make, and more, please watch the whole video, especially if you want to support me, it's the best thing you can do. Thank you guys so, so, so much for 4,000 subscribers. I appreciate it so much. 4K. Oh wow, this is getting insane. This video took a lot of time and effort to make. Just look at this script. So don't pause the video, follow my steps. Scroll down, subscribe, turn on notifications, like the video, scroll back up and enjoy the video. Before we begin, I should say that this is all constructive criticism. I don't dislike 3.0, I just prefer 2.0. And no matter if they keep it the same or change it even more, I will be continuing to use Scratch itself. Still a great program, Scratch. Nothing against you guys. As you can tell by my channel, I make a lot of coding videos on this platform. I've been on Scratch for just over 4 years on my Hyperdroid account, and over 6 years in general. And according to Scratch stats, my first ever project on the Hyperdroid account is the top 145th in the world, and my follower account is the top 150th in Australia, and... 4,500th in the world. <laughs> oh yeah, I should say, if you want to help increase that number and make me the biggest Scratch user ever somehow go to the top link in the description and drop a follow it's completely free to make a scratch account so please do let's see how far we can get so as you can tell i have experience with both 2.0 and 3.0 and obviously as you can tell by my videos i've stuck with 2.0 obviously scratch hasn't suffered from the change at all and i don't think they'd suffer from changing it again either but why do i prefer 2.0 First of all, the look of Scratch 3.0 is very strange. Why is the main stage on the right instead of the left like it has been for six, six years? Of course, Scratch is for children, with majority of the users being 11 and 12. But 32,404,065 people are 13 or above. And there are 24,155,980 children, 12 and below. So there are less children. So why does Scratch look so simple and cartoonish? 2.0 was perfect in how it captured simplicity in its look and complexity when the code builds, but 3.0 just looks cartoonish and too simple. Second of all, 3.0 doesn't have edges. It complicates things very much and makes it very annoying to handle all your code when you don't have anything to put your blocks up against. In the same topic, since 3.0 doesn't have edges, cleaning up blocks put them all vertically, completely different to 1.0 and 2.0's horizontal form. In all honesty, 3.0 has its pros, and of course, the cons. It's good but 2.0 is my personal favorite. In my opinion, having 3.0's new features such as the new audio mixes, new text and costume customization, and a couple new blocks of code with a main stage mechanic slash look of 2.0 would be perfection. Once again, I don't think 3.0 sucks or is horrible. I just personally prefer 2.0 for reasons I've just stated. How can Scratch improve overall? First of all, Scratch should be able to work fine on mobile platforms. It kind of does as you can see, but it's not meant for mobile. As long as projects are only when clicked, they should be able to work perfectly fine. Like a few of my games, they work fine on mobile, but the screen is somewhat cut off and it doesn't really fit or look like it's meant to be on mobile because it's not. Of course, console is a bit of a stretch. I've tried my best to get it to work, but thanks to how big the games are and how they need certain keys on a keyboard, etc., it just doesn't and will probably never work. Second of all, how cool would it be to have Scratch analytics? Crazy, I know, but we already have some analytics on the side. So wouldn't it be cool to show how much views you get over time, what's bringing you in followers, how much people play, how people are finding your profile, your top projects, stuff like that would be really cool to see. And of course, finally, let us see the number of comments we have on our project instead of just 100 plus. Another suggestion is having first created next to last modified on the public project page. So people can know when you first created the project slash first clicked create. So people know how long you've worked on the project for or when it was originally released in case of accident one sharing or just to see how long it took you to make it. Another suggestion is updating video sensing. 
As you guys saw with the release of FNAF AR on my scratch, video sensing can be used for AR games, but a huge complication for games like AR was scratch currently can't track when you move your camera or do anything with it. It can only turn your camera on and off and set the transparency. Updating video sensing with more complicated features would be really cool. Next I think images should be able to remain high quality upon upload. Don't get me wrong, scratch has improved on this between 2.0 and 3.0, but the quality of images is still a bit weird, so somehow improving on the quality of images would be good. Another suggestion is font uploaders. For example, fonts are usually downloaded as a TTF file, so being able to upload and add your own fonts would be pretty cool and would be a pretty interesting feature for even more customization. And if Scratch are worried about there being duplicates or too much on the system, maybe they can have something like community fonts, which other people have uploaded or something like that, which would be really cool. Since I'm just saying all the suggestions I'm thinking of, more audio effects would be also really cool, like distortion, muffled, echo, echo, and more. I also think, if possible, adding more keys would be good as well. For example, using the enter key, the shift keys, tab keys, etc. It could make for some really interesting mechanics and, and gameplay features and would definitely help real game recreators like me in making more features similar to the real games. Finally, and last but not least, pinned comments. Everyone has been asking for them for ages. Pinning comments would help the creator talk about updates, other projects, etc. without it being flooded and make the comment hardly seen by anyone in the comment section. Five Nights at Freddy's is popular and got really big really quickly, and this spread to Scratch as well. Dozens of FNAF recreations and fan games were being made, but FNAF was banned, well, more of just not preferred slash recommended. Quote from the Scratch moderation team. In the coming weeks, the Scratch moderation team will begin to unshare some Five Nights at Freddy's content from the website. We will start to unshare emulators of the game, i.e. Scratch projects designed to be replicas of the game. Since emulators of the original game contain much of the game, original scary content and background story. And they did this because parents were reporting their children were getting nightmares from these projects and people were rioting against FNAF in the form of forms and studios. They also give three core reasons, which I'll go through quickly. Quote, many projects contain disturbing imagery that can be seen as too intense for scratch. That is true, but honestly majority, if not all, disturbing imagery are from fan games, as most of the core slash main games don't include an ounce of blood or anything gore related besides a pixelated spring trap and a pixel bear bite, which Come on. But since majority are from fan games, that means this reason can apply to any franchise, not just FNAF. I'm sure there has been disturbing imagery created for Minecraft, the most child-friendly game out there. The second, the second reason was the plot of Five Nights at Freddy's is rooted in murder and kidnapping. And okay, this is a bit more understandable, but would anyone even know that it has a backstory slash plot about it unless they look into it themselves? Anyone who is 12 or younger may not even realize it has a story about those topics and would only be introduced to the story if they decide to themselves, which overall is not Scratch's problem. Finally, frightening images abruptly flash on the screen, which easily can be solved with multiple warnings, which is why every single FNAF game ever starts with a warning to prepare or warn you off that type of content. I understand Scratch wants to keep their website for all ages, but as I said before, there are less children than teenagers and adults on Scratch who can slash are able to actively play the real games, and if Scratch is for all ages, what about those who aren't children? Either way, FNAF is continuing to grow more and more mainstream media, with more and more children playing the games over time, with it being promoted with platforms such as PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, and more. Keep in mind that all of the FNAF games are PG-13. To put that into perspective, games like Spider-Man PS4, Castle Crashes, and every single Marvel movie is PG-13. Honestly, FNAF should be real out on Scratch, maybe not promoted or put on the main page, but it shouldn't be unshared or restricted at all. It should be searchable because if you search for it, it means you already know what it is or have experience with it. Scratch cannot be purely to blame for the nightmares or children's actions. No way. Another benefit to allowing FNAF is that it also brings a lot of traction to the site. A lot of attraction. For example, my FNAF project session recreations have a totality of 601,846 views. 
That's over half a million. In fact, like I said before, my recreation of FNAF 6 is top 150 of the entire site. That's a lot of attraction. A small minority of people may have rioted against it, but a lot, lot more have rioted for it. And I personally have been invited to studio after studio after studio trying to get FNAF back slash allowed. So re-allowing FNAF would also benefit that community of people too. And since all the FNAF hate was when it initially started growing, I personally feel as though the hatred has slowed down a lot. In fact, I've not seen FNAF hate in years now, honestly, and that's not an over-exaggeration either. So I doubt people will riot for it to be banned again. FNAF is just like any other franchise. It should be treated the same way as any other franchise is. It's only banned due to its negative reputation at the beginning of its popularity, which now is basically completely gone. FNAF should be allowed once again, and I'll stand by that. Scratch is a fantastic programming tool for literally all ages, no matter their skills or experience with coding. It's not too complicated and it's not too simple. You can make pretty much anything on here and I know that for a fact I'm going to continue making projects slash games and YouTube content around Scratch no matter the changes they make. This channel has had a lot of coding series and all of them have been the best of my channel and have really fused the Scratch community with my YouTube and that's one of the things I really like about Scratch, the community and people on it are always active and always willing to help out in projects or to reach a certain goal. For example, I made a studio on Scratch requesting help to reach 1k and over the next month the Scratch community genuinely helped boost me all the way to 1000 subscribers and the impact of simply just the Scratch community had made on my channel was simply amazing and the community continues to make massive impacts on my channel to this day. I'll continue to use Scratch as you can make pretty much anything on it and I really like to test that fact by recreating real games on it. I saw the other day that teachers genuinely teach some kids Scratch and I'm mind blown by that. Scratch is huge, genuinely huge, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Just look at the stats, the stats don't lie. In conclusion, I genuinely really like Scratch as a platform. Although I do prefer 2.0 over 3.0 and will continue to use 2.0 unless another huge update happens to Scratch, which is unlikely. I had a lot of suggestions and ideas for Scratch and I hope you all agreed with them. And I hope FNAF is fully allowed on Scratch one day. Really. I hope this content was digestible and easy to understand. I tried to get my points and suggestions across as clearly as I could, and I genuinely really hope you guys enjoyed. If somehow someone from the Scratch team is watching this, I hope you can take some of my suggestions, feedback, etc. into consideration, and I hope you enjoyed the video as well. Once again, no offense man in this video. I really like the program Scratch and will continue to use it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I can't stress how much I appreciate the recent support of my channel. We're predicted to hit 5,000 subscribers in about 3 months. And to me, that's insane. That's a whole thousand subscribers in a quarter of a year. To put it into perspective, it took me 3 years to reach my first thousand. 3 years to 3 months is incredibly insane. And I can't thank you all enough for that. When I say I appreciate it, I really do. I have some really cool ideas coming up. And if you yourself have any video ideas, leave a comment down below. That'll really help out. Thank you all again. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see majority of you in the next video.